This example includes a significant financing component. Therefore, again, when you look at our five steps, this will fall within number three. And remember, our significant financing component, we need to determine what is the present value of our consideration payable. They indicate to us G Limited entered into a contract and it falls within our scope of RFRS 15 paragraph 9. In terms of the contract, G Limited sells a product to its customer on 1 March 2015 for 1.4 million. The cash selling price of this product is 1.2 million. Now guys, immediately you can identify that they provide us with a cash selling price, but our transaction price is 1.4 million. On this date, G Limited transfers the product to its customer and its customer has control over the product. In terms of the contract, the customer will only pay the outstanding amount of 1.4 million cash on 1 March 2017. Now guys, I'm going to be honest with you. Immediately when I read this, my first step was to calculate my present value. They provide me with a future value of 1.4 million. I have my period being the two years and they provide me with a 9.5% interest rate. And this resulted in a total amount of 1167615. Now, when you start reading through the information provided, they indicate to us that they have calculated the interest rate implicit based on the fact that they've provided us with our cash value, which is the 1.2 million, and our transaction price, the 1.4 million. And they ended at a rate of 8,012345. Then they indicate to us that we will have to use the 9.5%. Now, guys, in a scenario with a question like this, what do you use? Your interest rate implicit or the interest rate that they've provided to us? Due to the fact that the interest rate implicit is less than the 9.5%, G Limited would have used the 9.5% financing option. Therefore, guys, you will have to use your 9.5% and our present value will be the 1167615. And then the difference between this amount and our 1.4 amount will be interest, our significant finance component.